Sir, number 17651. Show him in. Morning, Houston. Sit down, will you? All right, David. Cigarette? Well, Houston, you're going out today. I sent for you so that we could have a little chat. We do have the men's welfare at heart, you know. When you first came here two years ago, we thought we had a pretty tough job on our hands. Still, we've no complaints about your behavior since you've been with us. You've got a clean slate, and I hope we won't meet again in these circumstances. Now, the welfare officer has fixed you up with a job. It's at the Jennings garage in Lambert. Take this letter with you and ask for Mr. Jennings himself. He knows all about you and is prepared to take the risk. The money is not wonderful, but at least it's a start. All right, Davis. Keep out of trouble, Houston. You'll be OK. Well, goodbye and good luck. Here you are, mate. Here's some bump for you. I shall want it. Does that, Fag? You're not outside yet. Get moving. Yes, sir? I want to see Mr. Vinny. Come in, please, sir. What name shall I see, sir? Mr. Hewson. Wait a moment here, sir. I'll see if you, sir. 
Mr. Houston to see you, sir. Houston? I can't see him now. Tell him I'm busy. Remember me? I did a two-year rep for you. Bernie, I didn't realize it was you. All right, Charlie. Have a drink. What would you like? I'll have a scotch. Well, Bernie, it's good to see you back. Did you have a rough time inside? I'd hope to be back earlier. I thought you were going to do something about it. <laughs> now, what could I have done? Soda? You didn't expect me to organize a breakout for you, did you? It's been done before. Look, it was bad enough you had to get yourself caught. I'm much more valuable outside. Anyway, what do you want to see me about? Look, I've got to work. You'll have to find me a job. And don't forget, I haven't had my cut from that raid. Now, listen, Bernie, be sensible. That was two years ago. Things haven't been too hot lately. We've been living on that money ever since. It takes money to run an organization like mine. Yeah. So I see. You don't look as though you've been roughing it. Look, Bernie, we were all in it together. We all took the same chance. You were just unlucky, that's all. So what do I do now? Look, I've got to live. Now, don't you worry about that. You'll be fixed up with a job at the warehouse. I'll phone Mills. He's the new manager. I'll explain who you are, and he'll look after you. Have another. Yes, mate? I've come to see Mr. Mills. Is he expecting you? Yeah. Where's his office? Over there. You'll find him inside. OK. My name's Houston. Did you get a call from Vinny? Yes, I had a call from Mr. Vinny. Look, you can call him what you like. All I want is a job. You yeah, well, all right, all right, all in good time. How long has the bogey been working for you? What are you talking about, bogey? The bloke I just saw pushing the trolley across the yard. The tall one with the ginger hair. Oh, him, he's no bogey. He started here a week ago. He worked in the stores. That's what you think, mate. He's in the CID. You're joking. It's a good joke. Get in, Mr. Benny, quickly. Come on, get a move on. What's the matter? Got a train to catch? No, got a date. Got a sister? No, she's got a brother, me. Ask Sergeant Jones to speak to him, will you? And I don't want to be disturbed for the next quarter of an hour. Very good, sir. Sorry about that, Lynn. Are you taking care of your brother's personal affairs? There's no one else, as you know. I'm his next of kin. No, what I meant was, can I help in any way? Yes. Find the people who killed him. Have you any idea who they were? Ideas, but no proof. Terry was working for you at that warehouse, wasn't he? Yes. We never talked about his work. But I got the impression that he was onto something big. Terry was onto a bunch of boys who'd stick at nothing to get what they wanted, not even murder. It's going to be difficult to replace him. You'll find someone. You were very close, weren't you? We were. Inspector, my brother was murdered. 
I saw it happen under my own eyes. I'm determined to find out something about You're it. You're not in the police yourself, Lynn. Now, why not leave it to us? I've got to do something about it. Have you heard of Nicky's club? Yes. What was Terry doing there? Nothing, as far as I know. Why? Well, when I was alone with him at the hospital, that was the one name he kept repeating. I don't think we've got anything on it. I'll check it again, though. Well, it could be a lead. And it's the one I'm going to follow. Goodbye, Inspector. Lynn. Lynn, these boys are tough. They're not playing for pennies. And if they were, I don't think they'd like their pennies taken away from them, especially by a girl. Now, if you're dead set on getting into this, I can't stop you. I'll help you all I can. But I must warn you, you can't expect police protection. Let me worry about that. Thanks all the same. Okay. Goodbye, Inspector. Goodbye. Sergeant Roberts. Come in here a minute, please. What a nice bloody mess we're in now. Can't I trust anyone to do a job properly? All I asked was for Joe to take care of that guy. Oh, no, he has to be clever and go one better. Now look what's happened. The copper's dead. Yeah, but he can't blame us for that. It was you who suggested Joe in the first place. You know what a screwball he is. The heat will really be on at the warehouse now. The cops must have had their tabs on you even before Marsden's death. Maybe they did. But they couldn't have found out too much. He only worked there a week, and the diamonds aren't due until ten days' time. He couldn't have known about that. But you're right. We'll have to operate from the club. You clear up at the warehouse while I'm in Amsterdam. Yeah, I didn't know you were going away. I didn't know the copper was going to die. Might be just as well if I wasn't around for a few days. <laughs> Very simple taste. I really must confess it all. My jewelry is based. A simple girl, I simply say, if I heck, I write my name more clearly on a check. I'm just a simple girl. I want the simple things. I simply cannot stand those very gaudy diamond rings. A simple girl, and so I'll be quite frank. Simply place the money in the bank. Good evening, miss. Uh, can I get a drink down there? I'm sorry, members only. Oh, how do I become a member? You have to be proposed by a member. Oh. Uh, excuse me, miss. Uh, don't you know any members? No, no, I haven't been in London very long. In that case, I'll sign you in. Thank you. Your name, please? Lynn Austin. Lynn Austin. That's a pretty name. A simple girl and mink I'll never wear. I simply do prefer to hold my preferential shares. You'd like to cover me because it's cold. Then, honey, simply cover me with gold. Oh, oh, who wants caviar? It won't increase my appetite for honey. Oh, oh, when you want to pounce, it's not the sort that counts, it's the. Martini? 
Oh, yes, please. Martini, please, darling. As can be. I'd like to have my virtue and my virtuosity. But if I've got to choose, then I'll take care. I'm simply gonna choose a millionaire. I'm simply gonna choose a millionaire. Aren't you having one? No, not for me. I don't drink. Are you the owner of this place? Oh, <laughs> no such luck. No, I'm just the manager. Sam Warren. Well, cheers, Sam. Cheers, Ben. Have you been here long? About a year. Mm -hmm. I used to be at the Paradise Club. The police made a raid on it, so we had to close it. Here, come on. Let's find a table, huh? Tell me something about yourself. Well, there's nothing much to tell. Where are you from? Oh, a country town. Nothing interesting. That's why I left. What about your folks? They've been dead for years. I, I lived with an aunt. Worked in an office as a secretary. And that's the story of my life. If a girl like you isn't married. Well, it wasn't exactly a surplus of eligible bachelors. I'm eligible. Well, I'll remember that. I hope you will. Lynn, how would you like a job here at the club? Oh, give me a chance. No, 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 I'm serious. <laughs> well, you've got class and the place could use some. Well, you don't waste much time, do you? Well, it could be an idea. Think about it. Yes. Yes, I will. I've got to get some kind of work. Good. I've got a trouble with a customer. Excuse me. I won't be a minute. It comes very easy to someone like you, doesn't it, Nut? What do you mean? You leave Sam alone. I've been watching you, and I know your type very well. Just because they teach you good manners, you think you can grab everything. It's the fresh of who's Here, 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 lady. What's all the row? The row will really start if she continues to butt in like I this, ladies. Hey, why? Hey, why? Get your sweet on this way. Why just say something? Shut up! Listen to this. Ooh. Well, what was all that about? Oh, I don't know. She's been upset <clears> lately. <throat> Benning gave her the brush off a while back, and she's been using my shoulders to cry on. I see. How about a fresh drink, eh? No, thanks, really. I must go. Look, you don't have to worry about Francine. No, it's not her. I've got things to do. And you'll think about what I said? Yes, I will. I'll come back and see you tomorrow. Right? right. Good. Hello. Hello, sir. Well, how's it going? Did you get any leads? Oh, yes, I did, sir. Yes, I followed her to the cemetery. She left, she had a meal, she went to her place in Earl's Court, and then in the evening I followed her over to Mickey's Club. Fine, fine. Just what she said she'd do. How long did she stay there? Oh, not very long, sir. About two hours, and then she went home. OK, Robbie. Thanks very much. I think she may be very useful to us. Better? I like the flat. Nice pictures. Who chose them? Benny, the boss. Got pretty good taste, hasn't he? Well, there's nothing like living on top of your job. Yeah. 
How often does Mr. Venning visit the club? Oh, not very much. Uh, he uses my flat once in a while. As a matter of fact, he's coming up here tonight. Go? <laughs> no, not tonight. Business meeting. Oh, he has brought girls up in the past, though. He uh, interviews the hostesses up here. Nice work. <laughs> What's he like, this Venning character? Oh, very smooth. Big house in Chelsea and all that jazz. Club's only one of his sidelines. He owns a big warehouse. That's his main business, import and export. Let's go down and have a drink. Well, why don't you have one up here? Sam, if I'm going to work in this club, I've got to find out more about it. OK, Lynn. I'm walking with danger by my side. I know that you're not free to fall in love with me. For every night I walk the city alone and blue till I met you. I saw the danger too late to run and hide. I'm walking with danger by Martini and tomato my side. Down. I know that I am lost, but I won't count the cost. I can't resist you any longer. What sort of people use this club? Oh, all sorts. You know, tourists, tired businessmen, you know, the usual. It's really quite respectable, then. You sound disappointed. <laughs> no. Surprised, that's all. Lynn, how about you and I going out for a meal, huh? Don't you eat in your flat? Well, normally, yeah, but when Venning's around, I have to stay away. Now I'll be going straight home. I'm not used to these late hours yet. Can I see you home? Some other night. Okay, finish your drink and I'll call your cab. Huh? Yeah. You sure you won't change your mind, then? No, really. Warren, will you come back, please? You're wanted there, gentlemen. Oh, uh, look, excuse me, Lynn, I'm wanted. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, shall I? All right. Good night. Good night. Look, I'm awfully sorry. I, I won't be needing you after all. I'm sorry. That's all right, miss. Now, this will give you a good idea of the layout. Now, look at this map. This is the best spot to park the car. And how far is that from Martin's jewel house? Only a few yards. What's it like at that time of day? Busy? No, it's pretty quiet. You've got nothing to worry about. All you've got to do is to act fast and memorize that setup. <laughs> Leave that to us, boss. We know the drill. I'm here, Mr. Venning. You haven't finished here yet, Sam. You better shove off and go to bed. Okay, boss. Who was that guy? Oh, it's Sam, my club manager. He's harmless enough. Doesn't know a thing. Oh, anything else? No, that's about it. You better split up and keep clear of the club. I'll see you out. I've got to go down to the club for a few minutes anyway.
Willoughby. Who? Oh, hello, Lynn. Hello, Inspector. I tried, tried to get you last night. I got something for you. Can I come over right away? Oh, yes, but... No, wait a minute. Hang on. Um, you better not come here. Where are you speaking from? Elm's Court Station. Um, look, there's a coffee bar called the Gondola. It's on the same side of the road, a few yards down, towards Cromwell Road. I'll meet you there. OK, goodbye. Sam. I fancy you early, aren't you? You slimy rat. What have you been saying to Venning about me? <laughs> Nothing. Don't lie to me. Look, Francie, I haven't told anybody anything. Yes, you did. He rang me this morning. Yeah? What did he say? He told me to get my money from you and then to get out. Well, Francie, you've only got yourself to blame. Why? You've been shooting your mouth off too much lately. Oh, that's nothing. You wait till I really start talking. You and that classy bitch of yours. Oh, now, look, Francie. You please. can't brush me off so easy. Till she came here, you had plenty of time for me. Francie, keep your voice down. I don't care who hears me. I'm not afraid of anybody. And nobody's going to give me the runaround. Not even you. There's plenty I'm going to say. And believe me, I'm going to say it. Women. <laughs> Flat white coffee, please. Look at this. I didn't bring the map. Benny would have missed it. Hmm. This is from a throughway A map of London. Near to the intersections of G and 9, yeah. somewhere in that circle, there's a shop. It's called Martin's Jewel House. Hmm. Thank you. Martin's Jewel House. It's going to be raided. How do you know? I always thought there was something odd about Nicky's club. Last night, I was in the manager's flat. It's over the club. Mm. There was some sort of meeting. I overheard some of it. Who was there? I didn't see. But I do know Venning was there. He owns the place. Yes, I know he does. Have you met him yet? Not yet, but I intend to. Oh? Well, how are you going to do that? The manager's offered me a job there. Well, I must say you've got some pluck. Now, you just be careful, my girl. I told you they're a tough lot. Well, at least we've got something to go on now. Can I keep this? Of course. Where do you think it'll lead to? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. They get the belt round four. The cat of Martin's eyes have been well treated, and they appear to have stopped bleeding now. I must say that... This has been Thanks, Charlie. Sure, will you? That was a beautiful ride from Martin. Hello, Lynn. Nice of you to come. Nice of you to ask me, Mr. Well, Benning. Oh, come on, then. Let's be formal. Most of my friends call me Nicky. I'll take that. This has been the pattern of the Make yourself at home. They tell me you're doing very well at the club, Lynn. Sam's very happy with you. And what about you, Nicky? Are you pleased, too? Of course. That's why I asked you to come. There's room in my outfit for a girl with your brains and looks. Still, we discuss business later. What would you like to drink? Whatever you're having. Hello? I would like to speak to Mr. Venning, please. Can't he? He will be when I see him. Now tell me something about yourself. Well, you seem to have heard all about me from Sam. What do you want to know? Um, why aren't you married? You're a good-looking man. I've never had the time. It's always been business before pleasure with me. And which one do I come under? <laughs> You've got a nerve. So this is why you don't want to be disturbed, huh? Got yourself a new girlfriend. Excuse me, Lynn. I think we'd better settle this outside. Oh, no, you don't. She's going to hear exactly what I've got to say. I'm warning you, Frankie. Oh, too thick. She's only after what she can get. Just because she uses the right word, she thinks she can do what she likes. Take your hands off me. I don't belong to you anymore. You think you're a big shot, don't you, eh? But I know too much about you, and you won't be a big shot much longer. Well, she was really upset. Yeah, but don't worry. She'll cool down. She gets worked up over nothing. Look, Lynn, I think you'd better go back to the club, don't you? Oh, throwing me out already. 
Now, be a good girl and don't argue. Charlie will show you up. I'll see you soon. Good. Goodbye, Nikki. Goodbye. Put me through to Mr. Hewson, please. Okay, Bert, they've arrived. Better let the prowl car know. Hello? Calling Victor One. Calling Victor One. The boys have arrived. I repeat, the boys have arrived. Elkin and Stella got too careless or somebody squealed. And why should you think that, boss? That squad car was waiting, ready to pounce. I'm certain of it. How else would they have known that Elkin was in the shop? They couldn't have recognized Stella in the car. No, it's too neat, it's too convenient. Somebody shopped us, I'm sure of it. Yeah, I've just thought of something. What's that? Where was Sam Warren when you briefed Elkin and Stella? How the hell should I know? Wait a minute. I think you've got something. Sam knocked at my door. I told him to go to bed. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he waited outside the door and heard what we were saying. Why do you suspect him? See, he and the French dame were pretty close when you gave her the walking ticket. Perhaps he didn't approve of her being knocked off and tried to get even with you by grassing. What are you gabbing about? It couldn't have been Sam. He wanted to see Frankie out of the way as much as we did. They had rows. Bad rows, Dino told me, over the Austin day. No, it's my guess it was Frankie herself who set up the police trap. You could be right, Bernie. She said she'd get even with me for giving her the bounce. Maybe she did have time to warn the law before you picked her up. All we can do is to hope it was her. But in case it wasn't, we'll have to be more careful. I'm not taking any chances with those stones coming over. Have you made up your mind where they're coming to? Yes. We'll use the warehouse set up again. It'll be too dicey at the club. The place will be buzzing with blue bottles looking for clues on Frankie. We'd better not risk anything there. Not for a while, anyway. I'll let Amsterdam know. OK, boys, get moving. But be careful. Keep away from the club. Right. Poor Frankie. Well, I, I didn't know her as well as you did. Whatever she did, she didn't deserve that. What do you mean? Well, you don't think she committed suicide, do you? What else? More coffee? No, thanks. How well did she know Nikki Venning? Oh, I don't know. I, I think she was a sort of a girlfriend. That was before I came here. I didn't even pay much attention. Why? Oh, no, I think it doesn't matter. It's just that I can't help wondering why a lovely girl like Frankie should lose her life. You knew her quite well, didn't you? We used to go out for a drink now and then. When she finished her act downstairs in the club, you know, she was a lonely sort of person, uh, you know, away from her folks and all that. And I guess I was about the only guy she ever really got close to. She said I used to remind her of her brother. He got killed in a car smash. Would it help if I went to see her parents? I don't even know where they are. I think they moved away after the son's death. Well, I expect the police will trace them. Yep, I expect so. Robbie, I must be getting old. Anyone would think that was the first time I'd ever been to a mortuary. 
I don't know. There was something about seeing that girl lying there that got me. I suppose it's an association with a club and knowing that Lynn has worked away in there. I can't help wondering what'll happen if Venning cottons onto her. I keep seeing her lying on that slab in place of Frankie's. It's not a very pleasant thought, is it, Robbie? Why don't you ride the club and pull her out? It's what I ought to do, and it's certainly what I want to do. But how would I get Venning? He's as clean as a whistle. He's too cute to stick his nade out there. The only way I can get him is through Lynn. If I pull her out now, we're back to where we started. Nope. In spite of the risk, we must go along with her plans. Is there anything I can do? Yes, get me a car. I'm going out to that quarry at Homewood. I want to see if the boys have picked anything up. Do you want me along? No, you stay here. If Lynn telephones, you radio me, okay? Okay. Motorpool. Look out, sir. What do you have found? It's these marks here, sir. I wonder why the marks only start here. Whoever dumped the body must have dragged it from a, a car up there on the road, and yet the marks only start here. Well, supposing there was more than one, and she was carried here. No. No, there'd be heavy footmarks back there. I suppose the water filtering out of that thing could have washed out some of the marks and just left this lot down here. I suppose we're lucky in a way it hasn't rained for a while or the level of the water in that thing would have risen and wiped out what we have got. What's the drill now, sir? Better get back to the yard, I suppose. We'll give this to the lab boys. You never know what they might come up with. Come on. Sorry to disturb you, but I'm going away in the morning for a few days. I'd like to see you before I go. How would you like to have dinner with me, eh? Oh. Well, I I'd love to, Nicky, but I can't leave the club, can I? Well, look, darling, you know the old saying, all work and no play. I'm sure that Sam can look after things for one night. Good. I'll pick you up in half an hour. We'll go out to that restaurant by the river. Okay? I know. How are you feeling? Mmm. You bet. At dinner tonight. Oof. It's a long time since I've had champagne. Nicky. Hmm? How long are you going away for? Oh, a day or two. Why? Oh, well, I was just wondering. Uh, well, I haven't been to Holland and... Oh, Amsterdam sounds wonderful. Can't you take me with you? Well, look, Lynn, I'd love to take you with me. But I'll be too busy over there on this trip. But you won't be busy in the evenings. We could be together then, couldn't we? You know the club business. No, Lynn, when we do go, let's make sure there's no business problems between us. Oh, Nicky, you're, you're quite a big shot, aren't you? How many other businesses do you run? Oh, quite a few. Look, are you interested in me or my business? I'm sorry, darling. I didn't mean to pry into your affairs. There. I'm going to miss you, you know. 
Why don't you come over to my place while I'm gone? Charlie look after you. Oh, sounds fine. What if Sam asks why I've moved? Now, don't you worry about Sam. I give the orders. Lynn, I'll tell you what. When I get back, I'll take a few days off. Mm -hmm. Might even go for a cruise on my boat. What boat? I've got a motor cruiser moored up at Brampton Reach. She's a beauty, cost me a fortune. Like to see it? Oh, I'd love to. What's she called? Harlequin. Same name as a club I used to run. We could be there in about 20 minutes. Thanks, darling, but I must get back, really. My landlady, she'd be really worried if I wasn't there in the morning. Typing's worse than mine. Come in. Hi, Frank. Hello, sir. What do you got? Well, I thought I'd better let you know right away. That um, sand you brought me. Yeah? Did you find anything? Oil, sir. Oh, that's fair enough. It probably came from one of the lorries in the quarry. And normally I'd agree with you, sir, but not this time. This wasn't lorry oil. This was some sort of special oil which contained traces of powder. What sort of powder? It's hard to pinpoint. We're working on it now, sir. But whatever it is, one thing's certain that it and the oil came from someone's shoe and was rubbed off by the loose sand. That's interesting, isn't it? Could have come from the shoe of the person who dumped the body. How soon will you know about this powder? Oh, it shouldn't take the boys long. Anyway, we'll let you know as soon as possible. Fair enough. Thank you, Frank. Will it be? Inspector, it's Lynn. I got some news for you. Fenning's going abroad to Amsterdam, and he suggested I move into his house while he's away. What do you think? How long is he going to be away for? He said he'd be gone a day or two. Got to see some business people over there. Well, it might not be a bad idea to move in. You might find something out. Look, I don't want you to be there when he gets back, though. Why not? Well, you see, when Venning gets back, you'll be laying yourself open to... Well, I mean, I don't, th I don't think we'd like to be responsible for any harm that might come to you. He's no mug, you know. He's only got to suspect you now and put two and two together and he'll connect you with the Martin tip-off. Now, you better not stick your neck out. Thanks for the concern, but I'm not going to miss this chance. I've got a feeling he's planning something big over there, and it's not to do with the club. All right, this is your show. I'll get into Paul to check up on our friend, Mr. Venning. Uh, Lynn, be careful. I mean, I, I wouldn't like you to slip up now. Don't sound so stuffy. You know, you talk just like my father used to. It's a good job I'm not your father. You'd be given a good smack bottom and be sent home to bed. You're not old enough to be my father. Or are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> Goodbye. Bobby. Get me Inspector Van Cleef at The Hague. What's the rush, Bernie? Where's the fire? Fire? There'll be a fire right when Benny gets back. We've been bloody mugs. Well, what's up? The auction name, you know, the one at the club. I spotted her today. She bought some flowers. Well, so what? There's nothing special about that, is there? That's what I thought till I saw her going to a cemetery. Don't cut out the double door, Bernie. What's the cemetery got to do with it? She went straight to a grave and put some flowers on it. All right, I'll buy it. Whose grave was it? Terry Marsden's, the cop who worked here. Blimey. So she's the one. What made you suspect? That's the laugh. I didn't. Not at first, anyways. But Benny told me she was moving in with him. 
I saw buying the flowers, I thought, yeah, what's she doing that for? He has them delivered fresh to the house each day. So when she come out, I told her. She and Marsden must be related. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Have you got Fenning's number in on it? No, that's one thing he wouldn't let me have. He didn't want us to know his contacts. In that case, we'll just have to keep watch on that clever Miss Austin till Vinny gets back. Sam? Sam? What's up? I thought you said you didn't drink. I didn't. So I heard about you and Vinny. Why'd you do it, Ling? Do what? What are you getting at? Oh, come off it. You know what I'm talking about. You and Vinny. Why'd you have to move in with him? Now, listen, Sam. I haven't. And what's more, I don't intend to. Look, you've got to snap out of this. I don't know what you've heard about me and Venning, but whatever it is, don't believe it. Don't get mixed up with him, Lynn. Venning and his mob, they're not your sort. I know, I know, it sounds fine. A big house in Chelsea. Servants and fine clothes, yeah, everything a girl could wish for. Except one thing, then marriage. I don't worry about me, I can take care of myself. <laughs> sure, sure, that's what they all say. Until <laughs> they get in Venning's clutches, and then they find out he's tougher than he looks. Well, if you feel so bad about him, why'd you go on working for him? Well, that's a good question. <sighs> Trouble is that, well, once people find out you've been working for him, it's not so easy to get fresh work. Uh, Club Land, he's, he's one of the big boys, but he's got more enemies. He's got friends. You said he had other business interests. What do you know about this warehouse of his? Uh, I don't know. Not many people know even that he owns the place. Uh, he's got some guy called uh, Mills running for him, and uh, some stooge called Houston. They both been to the club. I, Hey, look, Lynn, well, why, all, why all the questions? I, I thought you weren't going to live with him. Why, why all the questions, then? You'll find out soon enough. Now, all I ask you to do is to, is to keep quiet and believe in me. Feel any better? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit. I'm going to get you a cup of coffee. Hey, hey, make it black, eh? You sure about this ring? Absolutely certain, sir. There's no doubt at all that the powder is a special carborundum type used only in the diamond trade for the stone cutting. Diamond cutting, eh? That's a long way from quarrying, Sam. How do you suppose it got into the oil? Yes, we've been puzzled about that down in the lab. The only thing we could come up with is that the oil was used on a lathe. Some trickled onto the floor under the machine and got mixed up with some powder that was already there. You said yourself that it could have come off someone's shoes. Yes, I know I did, Frank. I know I did. That doesn't get us very far, though, does it? Or does it? I don't know, sir. I can't help any further, I'm afraid. Well, thanks a lot. Something may come up. Frank. Sir? Thank the boys for me. I'll do that, sir. Well, what do you make of that, Robbie? Interesting, eh? I was just thinking, sir. When you spoke to Interpol just now, didn't they say that Vennings had been making trips to a jeweler in Holland? Yes, they did, didn't they? And in other countries as well. Oh, come on, don't stop thinking. A jeweler's on the continent. Venning's trips abroad, the import-export business. The warehouse, the diamonds, the girl from the club, of course it all fits in. He's using this club as a front, a cover for a more profitable business, diamond smuggling. And what better place to cut them up than in his own warehouse? And I'll bet you that's what Marsden got onto before he died. He found out what Venning was up to and Venning got wise to him. Oh, well, that makes sense, but where does the club fit in? Well, don't you see? It makes it all the simpler for him. Now, look. He tours the continent looking for dancing girls for this club of his. That gives him plenty of chance to establish his foreign contacts with the diamond trade without arousing too much suspicion. Perhaps the girls were in on the racket too. Perhaps they were smuggling the stuff back. They wouldn't be suspected. For all I know, Frankie was in on it and got too clever for Venning. Well, if that's the case, sir, where do we go from here? Well, Lynn told me that Venning's abroad just now. You know, I think it might be an idea to put a man on duty outside that warehouse. He might come up with a really important lead. Just see to that for me, will you, Robbie? Yes, sir, right away. Um, hang on, just a minute. First of all, I want to speak to Inspector Van Cleef at The Hague. I want to ask him where Venning is staying and when he's due back in London.
Yes, miss? Oh, uh, I'm a friend of Mr. Venning. Is Mr. Mills in? Yes, miss. Does he know you're coming? No, but M Mr. Venning said I could have a look round at his place and to ask for Mr. Mills. Very good, miss. You'll find him in that office over there. That's it. Oi. Miss Austin. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm looking for Mr. Mills's office. You'd better look again. Oh? It's this way. Hey, what are you doing? Come on. Here, leave me alone. When did you say, Inspector? An hour ago. Oh, damn. Oh, what a pity I didn't phone earlier. You could have held him. Uh, just a minute, did the hotel say which plane he was catching? I see. No, never mind, we'll just have to keep a good look out for him, that's all. Yep. Yes, thank you again. Goodbye, Inspector. This time you've been a bit too clever, Miss Austin. Or is it Marsden? Funny we should meet like that in a yard. I was wondering when you're going to pay us a visit. You may have fooled Benning, but not us. We've known about you for a long time, haven't we, Bernie? Yeah, take more than a bit of skirt to fool me. Is Sam in this What are you talking about? Why are you holding me here anyway? You wait. Wait till Benning gets back. He'll make you pay for this. Bernie, listen. We can't keep her here. Why don't you take her down to the boat? It's quiet down there. And when the boss gets back, I'll tip him off. I'd better stay here. He's bound to phone as soon as he gets in. Yeah, perhaps you're right. It's not too healthy here with her around. I'll take her out the back way. You check on Sam. Come on, you. We're going for a nice little ride. Call me. Just the two of us. Cozy, eh? Stop the yard, please. Willoughby? This is Blackmore here. I'm in a call box by Benning's warehouse. About 20 minutes ago, Miss Marsden went inside. So far, she hasn't come out again. Any further instructions? Yes, stay where you are, and don't go in until I get there. Right. Goodbye. speaking. Ah, at last, Mr. Venning. Uh, Bernie's not here. I've got news for you. We found out who that stoolie is. In Austin. Only our name's not Austin, it's Marsden. What? It can't be. There must be a mistake somewhere. Yeah, we're the ones who made the mistake. Yeah, she's been stringing us all along. Yeah, she's in league with the cops. Bernie caught her outside in the yard. No, he's taken her down to Brampton to your boat. No, oh, we thought it'd be safer to keep her there till you got back. What will you do now? Come here. No. I'll go straight to the boat from here. We haven't much time anyway. Pack everything up and meet me at the boat. Get a move on. Find a girl. Right. Who are you? My name's Mills. I'm yeah. the manager here. Thought you might be. Where are you off to? We caught him trying to run away, sir. The moment he saw the car, he hopped it. But the girl didn't come out. Excuse me, sir. The girl's not here. Yes, all right. 
Where is she, Mills? We know she went in there some time ago. Girl? What girl? I don't know what you're talking about. There's been no girl here. Lynn Austin, that's what I'm talking about. Come off it, Mills. You know where she well, is. I tell you, I ain't seen Listen, no girl. I know about Venning, the diamonds, the club, everything. Yeah, I know about the French girl, too. Now then, where's Lynn Austin, or do I book you for murder? Murder? Well, I ain't done no murder, Inspector. Well, you can't pin that on me. I never done it. Well, it was Houston. He was the one that... It was Houston, eh? I thought it wouldn't be Venning. He's too clever to do the heavy work for himself. We haven't got Venning, have we? We haven't got Houston either. We haven't got you, and it'll be you who'll carry the can back for them, unless you tell me where they are and where the girl is. All right, I'll tell you. Venning phoned me. He's on his way to the boat at Brampton Reach. I was to meet him there. Houston's already there with the Austin team. They know she's tied in with you. What's the name of the boat? Come on, blast you, the name of the The Harlequin. Boat. Right, look after Chummy here. Take him in. And then radio Roberts and tell him to close in on that boat at the double. Tell him I'm going to be there too. Blackmore, you come with me. Yes, sir. What do you want to take me for? I In the cabin. She started fighting and screaming. I had to tie her up, that silly bitch. Okay, fine. How did you know we were here? I phoned Mills when we landed. Seems we've been a little bit careless with our girlfriend, doesn't it? <laughs> that lot of good it'll do her. She can't do much screaming for the cops. What about Mills? He'll be down later. I told him to pack up at the warehouse and to follow on. As soon as he gets here, we take care of the girl once and for all, then beat it across the channel. We can get cracking over the other side. There's nothing here for us. What's the matter? Quick, car stop, I'll start her up. Go and get the car, Blackie, will you? Right. What's the matter, Hewson? Don't you like the water? You're lucky. I don't suppose the French girl did either. But then she didn't come out of it alive, did she? Or wouldn't you know about that? I had nothing to do with it. It was Venning. He killed it. Yes, that's what we thought. Till we had a chat with your friend Mills, he told us the lot. Except one thing. Who killed Terry Marsden? I didn't, Governor. I swear I didn't. Venning fixed it himself. He got Joe to do it. You laughs! Take care of him, Robbie. Money doesn't catch a cold. I'd hate anything to happen to him before he gets to the old Bailey. Go on, take him away. We'll follow. Come on. You sure you're all right? Fine, I think. Good. You know, I've been thinking. It's a pity you're not in the CID. Do you ever think of joining the police? Police don't really need me, you know. Sam does. <laughs> 